let's get good. I am the Gamer Under Development, and this is Endless Space 2. We are playing as the Virtual Saints, the Vodiani, and this is our exploration of patch 1.4.21. When we last left off, we had taken our Ark that got trapped by the slugs over here on Hydrus, and taken Gaina over, as well as managing to get Hydrus as well. We are basically pushing in on the Lumeris. We have an invasion fleet on Zaycor right now. They are in trouble and fast. Considering we are religious, we are able to declare war on them without actually declaring war on them, which is an incredibly powerful bonus. Uh, it does look like we have a new law available, perhaps. Let's go ahead and take a look. Peace and Prayer Act. Ooh, that's interesting, but it's not something we need right now. That'll help us with cultural... Com er, yeah, it's... Pacif pacifitic conversion is the technical term for it. What that means is, as you can see, these spheres of influence growing. Pavo here, technically, if we were not allied with the Riftborn, would be under a thing called Pacifitic Conversion. We'd have a little icon right here of a peace sign that we could click to spend a certain amount of influence to actually acquire Pavo as a system because it is within our sphere of influence. Now, you increase that sphere of influence by generating more influence. Uh, that being said, we're not going to be able to do that, obviously, because the Riftborn are our allies, and we are not encompassing anybody else at the moment. Yetix here does have this wonderful little fleet from the Umbral Choir here. Uh, not a super big concern. We do know they have 22 CP though, that's kind of scary, but I think we're at about the same CP limit. So we're watching that, but it's not anything that we're terrified about. Ani here, a great system for us to potentially get next. Uh, we are over the limit though, and we are beginning to feel the pain of being over the limit. Which is okay, because that means instead of invading Zaycor, we can just turn Zaycor into a hunting ground and get lots and lots of resources from it. I believe we're working our way on... Yeah, we are. Okay, so if the hack on Zaycor lands, we'll be a couple systems out from Oshi, which will be great, because then we can start stealing technology. Stealing technology, a big, big way to stay in the technology game if you're not generating a ton of science. That being said, we are generating a ton of science, so I'm not worried about that so much either. I think we're good to end our turn here. Everybody is doing all the things. Yes. All right. Hacking operations left unassigned. Everybody's doing all the things except for hacking, so let's start with that. Uh, where do we want to go? Actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to jump from Hydras to CRL2 to Pictor here. It's going to take about seven turns. We don't have the bandwidth to throw an accelerator down, so that's just what it's going to take. Uh, this is technically under the Lumera's control, but it's a special node, so they don't actually have, like, a system there or anything, which is good, because it means I don't think they can detect it, which means Pictor is their first chance to detect it, and Pictor being one system out of Oishi is really, really good for us, because it means that we'll have a very direct route to hack their capital and potentially unlock new technology. I believe we are also working on an Econ Behemoth, or we have one flowing around somewhere. Anyway, we'll look at that next turn. Sorry guys, it's it's been a day or two. I've had a lot going on. I'm actually getting ready to go out of town, so it took me a second to get reacquainted with where we left off. Don't mind that. Deed Claimer of Oddities failed. Objective completed by Sagaya. Be the first to possess 14 anomalies in your empire. Okay. That's fine. Congratulations, Rift... or uh, not Riftborn, Sophons. You've explored 80% of the galaxy. Almost there. Saint Zuliana has leveled up. This is our fleet commander, so we have finally reached this skill right here. Additional 20% damage. It'll be 40% damage when we get the second level, which is excellent. Uh, really happy to have that on him. Bodiani pops are growing everywhere, but we're going to keep doing that. Obviously, we want to max out the population on all of our arcs, especially since we're already over the expansion limit. Now is the point when we actually have to kind of be careful about expanding further. We need to focus on building arcs for potentially military use, which we haven't done yet. That could be a very cool thing for us to explore. Uh, all right, so you guys are fine. Gemini needs new things to make. So here's what you can do, Gemini. You can, for right now... I mean, honestly, make some make some money, money for right now. That's perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Mikre. Got a systemic oratory. Okay, Mikre's got a lot of stuff to go through. That's fine. Holy proliferation here on Gaina, which we already have another in queue. I think we had another system that was still gaining population. I believe it was Yetix. No, Yetix is done, uh, and Yetix does not need the system improvement either. So, Yetix is just churning through its production stuff now. That's great. 
Oh, Hydrus obviously needs population. Sorry, guys. Like I said, still getting back in the swing of this. Okay, Holy Proliferation here. Gonna go ahead and follow that up with... I mean, really... If we were gonna follow it up with anything right now, it'd be the level 2 modernization. I think that's actually what we're gonna do, because we only have a pop cap of 3 on our planets. So once that Holy Proliferation goes through, we will build the level 2 modernization, and then obviously we'll Holy Prolif again to make sure that we're at our cap. And good. Liquid composites, so we now have access to our carrier. That's exciting. That is very exciting. Behemoth maximization as well. Well-being foundation is being researched. This is because we need to make sure that we have that happiness coming in. This is a very interesting one. If we can get our systems to level 4, which we want to do anyway because it increases our pop cap, then we will be able to increase our system expansion disapproval limit. And then culture unshock, so that'll give us two more. Okay. So that'll mean we can continue to expand. We don't necessarily need to build military arcs. We'll see if we actually get there is, is basically where we're at. I mean, potentially right now we're there. No? No, 4,400 to build an arc right now. So that's okay. We don't need to be there right now anyway. Uh, we could pick up a couple more governors if we wanted. Let's, let's go take a look at the market and see what heroes are available to us. We want to do this before the Academy quest comes through, because once the Academy quest comes through, there is no more picking up heroes from the market, and that's kind of a, a troublesome thing if you were looking to expand your hero base. Uh, we don't get much out of that ability at all. However, that's not bad. Also not bad. I mean, not great, but not bad. That one's better. Yeah, we'll go ahead and pick up all the heroes we can get, honestly, at this point. We have the money. Uh, Burra Tech Seeker, what is your top tier talent? Not anything that I'm particularly in love with, but it's not terrible at the tier below that. And then Scales Galena. Oh, is that the one we already looked at, or do they both have that? They both have that. How wonderful. How wonderful for us. Uh, okay, either way, that's fine. That'll be three more governors. We have four more systems available. So yeah, let's do it. Bye. Bye. Oh, we're out of money. Uh, okay, there's a simple way to fix that. We have tons and tons of resources and strategics. Let's go ahead and sell a little bit of our strategic resources here to make up the difference. We can just go with like 50 Hyperium. That's fine. We don't use Hyperium very much. We tend to keep things a little bit cheaper and disposable, so that means that we can do that and pick up Burra, and now we've got even more heroes. And all we have to do is get those heroes assigned to different locations. Uh, Hydrus, if it does not have one, is a system we should be moving people to. Okay, Hydra has one. Gyna could use one, potentially. Uh, our capital is fine. Let's just... Here we go. Let's start with the most unhappy places. So Hydrus, you're getting the highest level one, because he may be able to bring some happiness to there already. Uh, and then after that, we're going to go look at our next most unhappy places. Yedix is pretty unhappy right now. Oh, Yedix is under... Yeah, Yedix is under blockade right now. That's kind of an issue. I think what we might do there is bring one of our combat fleets over there to deal with that. Yeah, you guys are coming over here to clear Yedix for us. Get to moving. It's going to take them three turns to get over there. That's okay. Uh, it's really frustrating that we can't put a hero there because of that blockade. But it is what it is. Because of that, we're going to have to put the hero somewhere else. But we can move them there once the blockade is cleared. Let's go ahead and go with... Gaina here, which will get Scales Galena. And then... For right now, putting... Actually, putting anyone on Sing is going to be a waste of time. Because Sing's not producing anything. Uh, so we'll do Columba with Burra Tech Seeker, and we'll have to remember to move somebody over to Yedix once Yedix is cleared. Okay. Welcome, Burra Tech Seeker. Welcome, Scales Galena. And welcome to somebody who actually does have levels. Wood Salenz. I think that's what it was. Wood Salenza. Why, hello there. Influence is great. We like influence. Uh, we also like production. Food, not so much. Let's go with Influence here for our first two levels. We'll have the Happiness bonus coming very soon after that. Okay. Very good, very good. We have heroes everywhere now. Well, not everywhere, but close to everywhere. And we're getting more and more Influence generation here. I'm actually generating Influence because we have some very nice Pacifitic conversion potential. Uh, for example, if Hydras here were able to really, really begin expanding their Influence, we could wrap up these Lumeris systems and be able to convert them. Right now, though, that's not our number one priority. We are, thankfully, enjoying just sapping up Essence here. 
as well as uh, preparing to potentially invade this place and turn it into a hunting ground. Oh yeah. It's going to be two more turns and then that place is a hunting ground for sure. And I believe that's our new Econ Behemoth, or is that our old one? That's our old one. Okay. So wait, I, I'm just double checking here. I've got a couple different playthroughs running, so it's sometimes confusing which one this is. Okay, we do not have the Behemoth text to build another Behemoth yet. That's fine. Man, I really want to get somebody up to A9 there. So let's see if we have any loose scouts that we can send up to A9. And if we don't, we should definitely build one and send it up there. Yeah, I don't see any in the area, so I'm just going to go ahead and build one here. Let's go with... Do, do, do. Where is our scouter? Is it scanner? Yeah, scanner is our scout that's able to actually probe stuff. So we're going to put one of those out right here on Wrath so that we can send it up to A9 and begin scanning that down. A9 being a four planet system is a very, very appetizing opportunity for us to expand into. Obviously, we could also expand down here, but there's just less going on here. Ooh, Mizar would actually be really nice. If we can get to Mizar by the time we can build another arc, we'll go for Mizar instead. Mizar being a five planet system with great endgame resources and Jadenix on it, that's 100, especially being right next to Oshi so we can start draining the or hacking the slugs repeatedly. New population bonus for the Vodyani. Oh yes, 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 yes. This is awesome. We have plus two speed uh, on fleets now and 100% hero recovery rate. But even before that, it was awesome with just the plus 5% fits bonus. We do want to make sure we keep our, our boast that. We do want to make sure that we keep our booster going, though. Sorry, guys, it's really early. I, like, woke up at as early as I could because I want to do this and then also get some, some footage recorded with the Nakalim before the embargo goes up on Thursday. Uh, all right, so two levels here. That's incredible, by the way. Two levels in one turn. Very happy with that. Uh, food is not useful. Production and food is okay. We're gonna do that. We're gonna end up having to take the food talent with him. That's just unfortunate. Or skill, rather. I keep calling them talents. Yes, Essa Volteros has gained a level. Uh, why were we giving you... Oh, okay, so Essa Volteros is a fleet commander, it looks like. Yes, yes, yes. So we're gonna go ahead and get more vision range. We could also get experience in vision range, I suppose, but this is giving us a lot more vision range, which is useful if you have somebody scouting for you. Okay, so Esim Volteros, you are set. I'm not gonna pronounce that name. We've been over this before, guys. I, I love all of you, but I don't love you enough to try to pronounce that name. Uh, so we can go with more influence here. We could also get more industry. We could also get some happiness, but he is gonna have the joy initiative when he hits that max level, so we don't really want to waste points on happiness there. Okay, yeah, apply that skill. And then, bam! Pi. We love Pi. Pi is awesome. Pi is literally one of my favorite heroes just because of Pi's name. Uh, okay, one point to put in somewhere. We could get more strategic, or actually more strategic and luxury resource values from this, which is very, very useful. We could also go for a happiness bonus. Um, let's see where Pi's at, actually. Nihal. Let's see what Nihal's happiness looks like right now. Nihal. They're ecstatic. Yeah, so we don't really need that happiness boost with Pi. That's okay. Uh, I think what we're going to end up doing here is we'll go for more of luxury and strategic resources just because that's a powerful way to keep our, our luxury and strategic resources flowing in. We haven't needed to use them in quite a mass capacity yet, but we'll probably get there relatively soon. Oh wow, the heroes on the market are gone. They are gone. Everybody like mine, we buying those up. Uh, we did want to do our next one of these. Let's go ahead and go with Dasidious Trees because I think we have a pretty solid source of those. Yeah, we have 15, uh, 15 of those coming in per turn. We've got 12 Void Stone coming in. Let's do that. So we'll get extra dust and production and we can begin upgrading all of our arcs. This will allow us to spend out some of this maxed out essence as well. Um, all right. So let's start with Gyna, which probably has some essence to blow. There we go. Hydrus is working on that, but they'll have essence to blow afterwards, which is great. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start working our way through the system upgrade three on all of our higher production system, so we should actually do this. Uh, that's not accurate, though, because that does not count the systems that are doing public 3D printing. In fact, the systems doing public 3D printing should probably be our priorities. I guess what we could do here as a, as a good idea of which systems are actually most developed is probably look at our influence, because we're not building influence on places that aren't done with everything else. 
Uh, so Wrath here is a great example of a system that we would like to do the level 3 upgrade on. Nair seems to be a, another very good example, although Sing is probably a better example because that is our home system. Unfortunately, we are out of resources to do a level 3 modernization there. I'm going to actually take it off Gemini here, and we'll do Sing instead because I feel like Sing's going to give us more overall resources. And now if we go into those systems, we can see the production values of those systems more accurately represented. Uh, Nair and Gemini here, if we put something else in Q real quick, if we just throw like a well-being foundation, actually putting a well-being foundation in Q there is not a bad idea. Uh, and then for this one, sure, put microwave pipes in Gemini, and that should give us a more realistic look at what our production values look like. So we are doing our modernizations in the most production generating systems, which is great, or the highest production generating systems, that's what we want to be doing. Very happy with that. Okay. Burra Tech Seeker has gained enough experience to reach level 3. Okay, we already dealt with that. Sorry, guys. Going through those. New collection bonus. Another level for Mario. Mario is leveling fast. We like Mario. Mario's got a cool name, too. Uh, Burra Tech Seeker. I thought we already did... Oh, yeah, he gained two levels this turn. That was just letting us know. They're like, hey, hey, you want to spend more? Uh, and it looks like we may actually be producing our second behemoth somewhere because I was wrong. For some reason, when I looked at this, I was like, oh, we need more text to get to two. No, we have two available. Uh, we are producing that on one of our systems, I believe. Yeah, it's Nihal. Nihal is three turns out from having our next economic behemoth. And that one has deep miners on it, so we're going to get to play with deep miners instead of just the I orbit and generate more FIDS ones. I, I tend to focus on the orbit and generate more FIDS ones because they require less management and I'm kind of lazy about that. However, why are we even on Canis? Oh, that's right, resources, resources. Uh, however, that being said, the deep miners are much, much, much more useful. So we're going to be doing those and I'll be able to tell you guys a little bit about how those work, which is excellent. Temperate, ster sterile, gas hot. So we're going to get 20 from that, which is nothing. Do we have anomalies? We do have anomalies on one planet, and we've got 10 population here, so 20, 30. Still not great. Uh, that's going to be plus 25%, which is going to be roughly 25 or 30. So pretty much all of our science improvements here are going to generate about 30, except for Graviton Shield Laboratories. So let's do that one. I may even move that up top, actually. And then happiness-wise, we're pretty close here. Uh, we could use a few more points. I'm going to go ahead and do luxury lotteries there as well. That'll help that out. Pulvis production. We're still going to get these strategic boosters, especially since this is our system that is generating Quadranix. But for right now, I'm also trying to make sure we get our basic Fidzy gains here covered. We do not have the resources to do the microwave pipes here. That's okay. We'll do them later. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That should be great. And here we go. We have Wellbeing Foundation. We know that because we've started building them. Body Language Institute is next. So this is big. More influence means bigger influence radius. That's what we're really pushing for right now is to see that pacifitic conversion really flow out everywhere. Uh, all right. More population needing to be built anywhere? I don't think so. I think we're pretty much pop-capped everywhere except for Gaina, which means it may be time to build another, uh, build another arc. It'll be time to build another arc, just not quite yet, I'm thinking. We're going to unfortunately need just a little bit more essence. I kind of wish we had a way to burn off a little bit of essence here, but we don't. So it is what it is. We do, however, have this scanner ship available to us now. So we're going to send that up to Ani to begin scanning that down. And yeah, you guys are fine. Oh, oh, wait, a Lumerai ship. Whatever shall we do? Uh, I really, really hope that they don't run because we'll blow them up pretty easily. Now they ran. They ran. Sad times. They actually did a lot of damage, though. If they would have stayed, they probably could have blown up some of our ships. Okay, so now we're ready to scan down a &I. We got there very quickly. Let's take a look at what's available here. Oh, sadly not deposits there. Uh-oh. What do we spawn? That's a fleet of pirates. This is going to be a bad time. Uh, so there's a prowler up there. That's going to be kind of annoying. 20 additional Jadniks. And then for this guy, he should probably beat feet over here for a minute. Ah, I can't. Too late, I got caught. Okay, so hold on. We're gonna minimize that uh, and set him not to leave, or I guess we're not gonna set him not to leave because we have to deal with the combat first. Sure, retreat, retreat. You're not winning a fight with a Prowler right now. Ah, uh, you're dead. Okay, well, that's why those are cheap. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to redirect this fleet to Ani to clear that fleet out. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Hi, remember when you blew up our other ship? We didn't like that. We will like this, though. I'm going to turn on watch here because if we can, we're going to be able to do it because I found the shortcut keys to turn off the UI and I'm excited to actually, like, record a beautiful fight. Sorry it took me so long to figure that out, guys. There we go. Just gorgeous. This is going to be a slaughter, but it's also going to be gorgeous. Look at our ships. The Vodyani ships are just beautiful. Look at that. Regal and deadly, just like the Vodyani themselves. Go ahead, boys. Light him up. Light him up. Oh, just beautiful. He's going to pop super fast, too, because these ships have a lot of firepower. Oh, he gone. <laughs> He's gone. Done for. That quickly. Hopefully we get a better fight here in this episode that we can watch, because that was super cool, but obviously not very long or, you know, super, super exciting. We didn't really have any competition there. Uh, okay, now you guys can go on up to Yetix. Oh, that'll be a good one. That'll be a good one right there. We will destroy the Behemoth. That'll be a fun one to watch. I'm actually super excited about that now. Um, and we should probably put another scanner out somewhere. Honestly, I'm just going to do it here on Canis real quick. Maybe this time, Scanner, you can find something other than a pirate ship that's going to blow you up. That would be great. Alright, ending our turn. Let's go. Just having fun here with Zaycor. They're probably ready to be invaded very, very soon. Even if they're not, when our hack lands on Zaycor, if we decide to do the, uh, the give them a bad ground plan, we can probably take it right there. In seven turns, ensure the population for minor civilization. Well, we never had a chance at that. We never had a chance at that. They win. The purpose of the Academy has yet to be determined, but it was built atop an ancient archaeological dig that shows signs of destruction and ruin. Whatever cataclysm occurred there, it certainly involved the Endless, but also another great power. Was it war? A foolhardy experiment. A terrible accident. Nobody but a Sander appears to know, and you cannot get him to respond to your diplomatic summons. But there is one sure way to get all the attention you desire from the Academy. Dust. As the old saying goes, Dust talks. If you can control both star lanes and dust with a powerful trading company, you will certainly merit an audience with the Sander. In ten turns, make sure you own the trade company producing the most dust in the galaxy. Well, that's not hard. Be the first to unlock the third population collection bonus level within your empire. Congratulations, you have achieved this legendary deed. Of course we have. We are the virtual saints. What did you expect? And our reward is the Citadel of Dem Demography. Plus 50% diplomatic pressure. That's actually awesome, guys. That's really cool. Uh, okay. Oh, and our faction quest, it looks like. Woot. For now, the galaxy yields before our virtue. One day, they will kneel before our glory. To do this, we must remove the influence of the infidel, Isander, my brother. That future has not yet come, but the clock ticks, and I find myself eager for the confrontation. Uh, so exert 17 positive pressure on at least one major empire. So we did that. Unintentionally, basically. Academy of Virtual Purity plus 50% influence can only be built once per empire. Wow, that's big. That's really, really nice. We're already generating a ton of extra influence right now anyway, though. Uh, the lies of the False Academy and Isander cannot be tolerated. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we'd actually already read that part. We must build a new academy, create a true center of learning of dust and legend that tells the story as it should. That story is of the glory of the virtuals, the rise of the Vidyani, and the state of virtuality as the ultimate goal of any sentient species. We shall destroy the false academy and build the true one. Ra. Okay, so we have to build the academy of virtual purity on one of our systems. Heroic virtuality pods. No cooldown for hero assignment. Wow, that's good. That's really good. I mean, it makes sense, too, because essentially you're virtualizing your heroes so they can jump across the galaxy because all they are is data being uploaded into a database. Ooh, dust or influence? I... Okay, I'm gonna go with dust here because we do want to generate more dust for that academy quest, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's from the... That's right, that's from the trade companies, though. So we need to make a trade company, which means that we need to get the trade company tech if we do not already have it. We do. Have we just not built a trade company? Am I just that bad at life? I am. Okay. So we're going to come in here and build our first trade company. Maybe we just got that, though, because I don't think that was available before. So we'll build our first trade company there on Sing to start with. Uh, Scales Galena has leveled. 
Daro St. Taj has leveled. All right, Daro, where are we putting that skill point at, though? So we're probably going to go here for some more influence because we're really enjoying that influence right now. And I'm going to come up here to our laws because we do have a new slot. That's awesome. Having an additional slot is great. It means we can get even more things running here. Uh, Make Love Not War would actually give us quite a nice happiness boost at this point. I think that's definitely a good option. So is Peace and Prayer Act. I wonder if that'll affect stuff that we're... Like, it says plus 50 essence per systems of other empires under your influence. Uh, and then plus an additional 5% for those systems. The question is, does that count the systems of our allies? Because if it does, we have at least one here. Although, really, we're kind of essence capped, so that's not really a useful thing for us to have. I think instead what we're going to do is either go with My Precious or the Happiness bonus. I think we'll probably go with My Precious, actually. That, that makes a lot more sense to me. Uh, so we should have a lot more dust rolling in off of the back of that. When our trade company gets built, we'll be able to pump it up very, very quickly because we have a ton of dust to dump into it. Gaina is ready for another population, I believe. Yes, they are. One more population there. Uh, we also have some other systems that will have completed their upgrades and will also need additional population. Oh, or not. Level 3 modernization takes a second, y'all. It's not a one-turn upgrade like I'm used to. Oh, they are... Mm, they are flat out... Yeah, you guys made a mistake. Mistakes were made, and you're done for now. Uh, let me take a look at that 3,072. 10,875. Who wants to blow up a behemoth? We do! Uh, this is gonna be awesome, guys. I hope you're as excited as I am, because we're gonna blow up a behemoth today. Why, hello there, behemoth and hero and cells. We are going to explodinate you. Uh, let's go into advanced here, because I do want to reorganize our fleets a little- Actually, no, I don't. Our fleets are great. They're exactly the way we want them. So, if we use shield absorption here, we are going to not reduce any of the damage from the behemoth. Or it looks like anything else. However, we will stay at max range. What is the range on- the Yeah, their, their ships are all very short range. Uh, actually, that one's long range. So they've got one long-range ship, and that's about it. No, they've got two long-range ships. That's okay. This is still the best plan for us. It keeps us out of the main range of the economic behemoth's weapons, and we are going to watch this for sure. This is going to be phenomenal, guys. Oh, they ran. Why you gotta run? That's not cool. Weak. Okay, so they ran away. We're not going to get to blow them up the way we thought we would. Sad, sad times. Hydrus has received its level 2 modernization as well, so it's going to need another Holy Proliferation. Excellent. Uh, we may actually consider not doing either of those and just building another arc here. Although we... Let's check our expansion disapproval limit, actually. And let's also look at this. Empire Development 4 is unlocked. So if we get up to Empire Development 4, or Empire Development 5, if we actually get one of our systems up to level 4, we can use that to continue to increase our expansion approval limit. Uh, Solar Security Operations Base is under research now. That'll give us additional trade subsidiaries and some extra value from our trade routes, which is excellent. Let's go ahead and check now. We Oh, wow. We have three more available systems. Uh, so what it might be worth doing here is instead of doing population on those two systems, it might be more worthwhile to go ahead and put out another arc and send it over here to a &I. I think that's actually probably going to be a better idea. So we'll cut that. And we'll also cut the population from... Was it Gaina? It was Gaina. Okay. No more pop for you guys just yet. Instead, we're going to go make us an arc. While we're at it, because I'm paranoid, let's double check that arc. Okay, that is a good arc. <laughs> that is a good arc. Hydrus, are you a good arc too? We just want to make sure that I, I didn't miss something. Oh, Hydrus is a bad arc, guys. Hydrus is a bad arc. That's my fault. See, this is why you got to check. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut those. I mean, I don't know that we need more essence, but sure, we'll do we'll do essence there, and we'll upgrade. And now we'll have to go and redo an arc design that has a couple engines. Although honestly, here to here we probably only need one or two engines. So let's go ahead and go arc, edit. Let's put a couple engines on there. This time I gotta remember. It's it gets it's easy to forget when you have as much going on as you do in the late game. I'm just gonna throw that out there. So. So feel free to rip me one in the comments, guys. I know I made a big mistake forgetting to change that arc, but it happens. It's it's really hard to keep up on all that stuff as you get really going in the late game. 
Uh, Ark's gonna go up top. The important thing is to not sweat it too much. Like, the reality is we didn't lose too much with that happening. Uh, let's just throw a drone networks in here to start with. Also throw a drone networks in down here on Gaina, unless they already have drone networks, in which case we'll build something else. I mean, honestly, we can build a couple things here. So let's start with drone networks, and then looking, we have a couple hots, a couple temperate fertile, well, one temperate, one fertile. So if we look at Xeno Industrial here, we're getting 40-60, it looks like, right now, versus if we go with AI Labor, we're getting a lot more. Per population on hot, we're getting 20, uh, and then we have a sterile, so we're getting 40 there. Oh, we're actually not getting a lot more. We are getting a lot more from this. We're getting 80 here instead of 60. And then if we have strategic resources, we're getting a lot more from that, I think. Three times 12, so that's 48. Yeah, we're, we're getting a lot more from interplanetary, so that's what we're going to do is uh, interplanetary transport network here. And we're going to put that right there in queue. Honestly, let's see if we can get a whole bunch of these done. That would be great. Oh my gosh. Sorry, guys. Somebody has decided that now is the time to blow up my phone. Should have silenced that before I started. Um, all right. So we'll get rid of that. And I think after we set these systems up to produce a couple of things, that's probably going to be it for this episode. Sorry for it taking me a second to get back in the swing of things. Lots and lots of stuff going on. Very excited about the Nogalim. Going to be doing a whole bunch of episodes of that today, so definitely keep an eye on the channel for Thursday. Uh, let's go ahead and do... Here we have strategics as well, but we have less population. We've got three. So, nine, nine, and nine. That's 27. Not as great there. Xeno Industrial here, probably a little bit better. No, we actually have no temperates or fertiles here, so Xeno Industrial will give us 30. So we're still going to get more from that. Uh, definitely going to get more from Predictive Logistics here. And then AI Labor, we have one hot, two hot. So that's 15 and 15 is 30. Oh, yeah. This is, this is going to be the best right here, Predictive Logistics. That's going to take two turns, though, so we won't end up being able to produce that. So we'll just throw whatever we can get in one turn on there. That's fine. That's perfect. That'll set us up nicely so that we can build pop next turn, and everything else should be good. That's it today, folks. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!